is Christian McHugh. I'm the DevOps leader for Dun & Bradstreet in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, it's my job to reform companies so that they, they provide a more agile workplace and follow a DevOps methodology. In the case here, that means leading DevOps teams for greater success in the organization. So Dun & Bradstreet's a 170-something-year-old startup. Uh, they provide company data to other companies. They're a business-to-business -business firm that provides uh, analytics, research, uh, uh, financials, just information about companies to other companies. And that's really interesting to me personally because that's a really big data pipeline. Effectively, it's a company that was doing big data before there were computers. So Dun & Bradstreet might not be a company that's known for being super cutting edge, but like any large organization, they have a lot of different teams working on a lot of different products. So uh, we have uh, the team here in Dublin, for example, one of them is working on reforming their data pipeline. So they take in data from all kinds of different sources, they chug through it, they, they have to, uh, we actually have pretty large Hadoop clusters in AWS, and we have to process the data to turn it into something that's usable through an API scheme. So uh, while the, the historical legacy of how all this data got to be isn't necessarily super cutting edge, because it probably involves mainframes and, and old uh, big iron kind of boxes at various points, uh, the outputs that customers expect in 2016 still needs to be a reasonably modern interface. So we're working to modernize our data pipelines. We're working to uh, provide different interfaces to how we process the data. We're working to provide better data all the time. Moving into a, a DevOps culture in any big company is effectively a lot of work. It's probably going to be somewhat of a fight. You're talking about a pretty big cultural difference from the way that people used to run computers to how some people would expect to run computers these days. It's, it's a cultural difference. So the amount of access that you give to your developers, the amount of access that your, uh, maybe your sysadmin or ops teams had, uh, maybe the interactions you have with your compliance folks, your security folks, how you manage your environment, all of that stuff is kind of in play with DevOps methodologies. And so it's a lot of work. You have to convince people that it's a good idea. You have to show people it's a good idea. You have to demonstrate that it's a good idea. You have to demonstrate your controls, your, your security, your compliance, take all of that stuff into account. Um, and then doing that over the span of a big enterprise is a challenge. You have to do this not just for a single silo, let's say of 20 people on a team making a product, but you have to transform potentially an entire organization and convince multiple levels of leadership that this is a project that's worth funding or putting up with. You have to convince all the developers potentially they need to change the way that they're working. You have to convince the operations people that were doing it this way for so long that they need to change. And that's an interesting problem. It's, an, I think, a pretty fun problem. Um, out of all the people and process stuff that you have to do, out of all the technology stuff that you have to do, it kind of comes down to not tools and not really tech. It's an awful lot of people stuff. So it's, it's managing a culture and building something new and bringing people together to build out a thing that's better for everyone. The key challenges in our environment now would be um, finding the people who are interested in this kind of work, uh, finding who your champions are going to be in, your, in the organization to be able to move these kinds of initiatives forward. Uh, in our case, we have good uh, leadership who everyone's interested in pushing these things forward. So it's a matter of figuring out how we're going to do this stuff right. Um, we have to worry about our compliance and security concerns that I alluded to earlier. And so it's effectively finding all the key players who can take all these big concerns and tie them all together so that we're all rowing in the same direction. Uh, the maturity of the organization depends probably on the individual team. So in any large company, you have lots of different teams working on lots of different products. So some of the products that we're working on in, let's say, the Dublin office, for example, um, are pretty reasonably well advanced. They're working uh, out of uh, configuration as code uh, in AWS, and the developers are working with kind of an AWS sort of uh, platform in mind, using, utilizing the platform as a service. We have other development teams that use uh, big iron stuff on uh, uh, hosted, our own hosted data center where we have to do things in a very different kind of workflow. So it depends on the team. Um, the tools used probably depends on the team. And one of the initiatives that we're working on at the moment is kind of trying to bring all those things together to centralize our processes, workflows, effectively bubble up the, the best practices of what's working well. So the benefits of all of this are that um, you have the idea of agile development, right? So you have uh, a continuously iterative process with short sprints. We're able to track your project in a, in a you're, you're tracking a long life cycle in short iterations so that you're capable of creating a minimum viable product and releasing it as soon as possible and iterating on that quickly to provide maximum value. DevOps is the iteration, it's the continuation of agile into the operation space. So 
you're taking the DevOps to me isn't just that you have developers uh, working in an operations way. It's not that you have operations folks working with developers necessarily. It's taking the development uh, practices and methodologies that we've refined over the last 30, 40 years and applying them to an operations lifecycle. In which case, the benefits that we see out of all this are the continuation of the agile benefits. So we're able to get faster iteration, we're able to get quicker turnover, we're able to get our code deployed better. We're able to effectively uh, come up with a uh, more value to the customer, faster, cheaper, better, stronger, faster. So uh, in our operations here in Dublin, we have a couple different teams. So my role is to manage a few different DevOps silos that are attached to those various teams. So we have DevOps engineers that work with our developers very closely to, uh, let's say, manage the AWS infrastructure and deploy that out, manage how we do our continuous integration, manage our release management process, uh, manage kind of all the operations -y side of stuff. Um, our developers, um, our goal with our developers is to enable them. So I don't want anyone, uh, let's say, creating a ticket to have some of our engineers to act and to do something. If that's an interaction that we need to have, let's figure out a way that we can enable the developers to, to bring about that thing, and that's what the DevOps engineers exist for. So uh, my role in the organization is to manage these various teams that are all working with uh, specific development teams, but also to bring them together to see what practices are working amongst all these different teams. So they might be uh, kind of operations, uh, integration glue scripter folks that are working with developers, but they're also DevOps engineers that have to work with each other, and we all have to kind of figure out the best way of working things. So we might bubble up, say, our AWS practices or our monitoring or the way we're doing logging, and we'll centralize what we can centralize, but not to the detriment of uh, holding back uh, any of the rapid iteration of any of our teams. So it depends on what they're trying to do. So the developers, from my perspective, are autonomous because they don't work for me. I, I, they have their own development chain that they're reporting to. So they're working on their own stories and their own uh, Kanban board of to-do list. Um, the DevOps engineers are working with them to accomplish some of those tasks. So some of the tasks that come up for any development project will probably be related to operations at some point, and so they get involved in those stories. But they also individually have their own stories that they have to work on. So if we, let's say, have to pick a new monitoring product or change the way we're doing our configuration management, that'll be probably something that's, come up, that's driven by the DevOps side of things, but they're not working in a vacuum either. There's no magic bullet for avoiding bottlenecks aside from reduce them to the best of your ability. So we have certain people who are very key to our operations that the developers probably want to pull in to do some of the DevOps operation-y stuff for them, but we also, as you mentioned, might have uh, some operations-y DevOps stories to accomplish ourselves, and those people might be key people for that too. So at that point, we can identify that that person is key for a host of reasons and ensure that we do a knowledge transfer such that they're not as much of a bottleneck as they currently are. So uh, spread the load as much as possible. Our goal is to enable our developers to get something done. So if the DevOps team becomes a bottleneck, we want to figure out a way to make us not a bottleneck. Maybe that means that we create, let's say, a workflow in Jenkins that accomplishes that thing, and then we can delegate that button out to our development team so that they can accomplish that thing safely because that Jenkins job will be managed by the folks that are responsible for it, but they have the ability to execute it on their own schedule. So in my opinion, DevOps is more or less running computers properly. This isn't a new idea, it's just that our tools have gotten good enough to enable us to do these things properly. So in the past, it used to be that you had your sysadmin who would uh, control the, this kind of like big iron, let's say Unix box, there'd be multiple users on that Unix box, and it was the sysadmin's job to manage that environment and to make sure that no one stepped on anyone else's toes. And this stage in our, in our development, we now have VMs, we have containers, we have other ways of running those individual apps. So the role of the sysadmin has transformed from that of managing a single instance to managing hundreds, thousands potentially. And so that, that mindset of what they were trying to accomplish of run these apps to the best of their ability, optimize the environment for this, this thing to get run, um, that's not changing. So our tools will probably change, and our scale will probably only increase, but effectively I think we'll pretty much continue on the same run because we've now been able to codify the entirety of our environments. And that was kind of the last missing piece in how we ran things. No longer do I expect someone to just SSH into a box and run a couple of commands. I expect them to have some uh, iterative, uh, peer-reviewed, codified process that we can evaluate, we can audit, we can unit test, and that's the continuation of uh, the life cycle of how we should have been running computers the whole time. It just so happens that now our tools have gotten good enough to allow us to do it.
So the, the key thing is really, it comes down to culture. And so that's kind of a scapegoat because there's no easy answer there, but it's care about people. You're going to find some really excited folks who are really engaged and involved in the process. And you want to keep them around. It only takes one bad apple on the team to ruin the morale of the team. And morale is kind of the key to everything. That's what creates the good place to work. That's what your retention mechanism is. That's your recruitment mechanism. That's what makes it an interesting place to work. And so you want to make sure that you're taking care of your people and providing a workspace that allows them to succeed.